So I'm going to keep an eye on uh, David Hatton and Sam Harper throughout this race, keeping you updated on the championship battle. Um, they start again alongside each other with uh, Harper just ahead of Hatton, and we're about to go green, Chris. Yep, lights are up. Connor Meyer and Gregory Leader, the top two on the grid ahead of Gary Thomas. And we are away, and Connor Meyer, he does get a reasonable start. Gary Thomas trying to pull alongside Gregory Leader in the... Uh, Monday Williams colours, but it is Mark Greenhow in the McLaren colours trying to get up the inside, but to no avail. So it's uh, stayed as far as it was. And there's Picacci getting up the inside uh, of uh, John Lang and uh, around the outside of turn three as well. That's a brave move. Did exactly what James Wingfield uh, did in uh, race one there. So the uh, reigning MX5 champion already making up places. There was a spinner at turn one and, and, and uh, Harper did actually clip them, but he's alongside Hatton. They're both going side by side through the S's. Uh, I don't think it's affected him too much, but he did have a, uh, he might have some front end damage. I have to see as we go along. Uh, that's going to be critical because he needs to take points out of Hatton. Uh, so uh, we'll see uh, how that unfolds. Uh, just behind uh, Fikachi and Lang, we saw going side by side through the S's. It's Dovitzberger, Drillsma, and then uh, John McClintock making their way uh, around towards the hairpin now. But it seems like the key players have gotten away cleanly, critically. And, Ooh, and uh, Hatton has just turned around uh, Danny Henney uh, at oh the hairpin. Oh, my goodness. So those well, two have come together. There's carnage down at the hairpin because of that. And uh, Hatton, crucially, didn't lose any positions. And uh, if anything, Harper got caught up, and he's got Grant Pagere right behind him, and uh, he's really he's trying to make He's got wing damage. Big rear wing damage on that car. So Sam Harper, he's going to have his hands full now, especially with Hatton not losing out seemingly from that. This could be a devastating blow for his championship chances. Yes, I haven't seen that, Chris. There's a big... Oh, and he's, he's actually off gone road. off the circuit again. He's and out. he's out. Uh, surely that's the end he's of the race for Harper. He's the road. What happened there? He's right in the middle of the track. There goes Danny Henney. And he's got very much a, a damaged car as well. That's going to hinder his progress through the field this could be it this could be it for Sab depending on how many points David uh, scores now he could wrap this up early that's it so uh, oh, after Ben Jean's think... round of the hairpin and he's, he's got no rear wing he's um, and uh, trumpets with no front wing Henny's coming into the pits there's absolute chaos on this opening lap at Suzuka so that is very controversial there. I think uh, Harper's title challenge is over because of what he did, or rather uh, what Hatton did in front of him, which was to, uh, he stuck his nose up on the inside and actually took out Henny uh, just in front of him. That sent, uh, that made Harper check up on the brakes. And I think it was Bajer, but I'm not sure. Uh, just take you into the back. There is a massive queue of cars in the pits uh, after that first lap carnage, Chris. So just up at the front of the field, Gregory Leader has made his way to the front ahead of Conor Meyer. I said, watch out for him. He has taken uh, a reverse grid win earlier in the season, way back at Okayama, and he was fighting for the podium at the Nürburgring as well. So uh, Gregory Leader leads, uh, as per his surname, and that's what we always want him to do in the HWA collars. Um, Steve Ficacci has made his way up into third place uh, with John Lang also making their way past Gary Thomas as well. Uh, Mark Greenhow and Alexander Dobitsberger looks like they're about to do battle as uh, Garen Batten is defending from Alex Drillsma, who is continuing to impress in only his second Formula Renault Challenge race. Then there's Yella Ooms, man third in the championship at the moment and trying to secure that position. Carl Power also running uh, strong and cleanly in his battle for the um, uh, for the Mr. Apex panel supremacy. And just behind them is David Hatton. And he's got a clean car as Power trying to go around the outside of 130R and neither one of those two drivers wanted to, to give an edge. That's John Langan that he's just going wheel to wheel with and Power has pulled off a sensational move. Uh, but uh, right behind then, David Hatton critically uh, getting through cleanly. So where has uh, Sam Harper emerged in all this? He's not last critically. We are down to 39 cars, which is important. Um, and uh, Harper was 34th last time around. So if Hatton can make his way uh, about 20 places ahead of him, he'll wrap this up early. But we'll keep you updated as we go along. 
he's in a real dangerous spot here, Chris, because he's in such a tight battle here. He's got Wingfield behind him and he's uh, got Shelley in front of him. So both those guys, very quick drivers, uh, but he's got to be very careful because they don't have as much to lose as David does. And in fact, just ahead of him, uh, Shelley is going uh, wheel to wheel and he's just got past John Langan. If those two come together, oh, it's so tight. And Hatton had to, to check up there and nearly got hit run into the back off. So he's, uh, he's, as I said, he's very much in the danger here, Chris. He's got to be very careful. He does indeed. Power, meanwhile, he's also making up the uh, position. So he's going around the outside of uh, John McClintock into the hairpin. And we see Hatton also trying to make a move into uh, there and he's right tucked up right behind uh, James Wingfield now yeah Wingfield got round to him on the outside of the hairpin so it's actually him losing that position rather than gaining it Chris ah and he, he's uh, right up in there behind John Langan as well he's just gone wide into Spoon and that's easy pickings for Wingfield we'll see what uh, Hatton can do with this uh, I'm, I'm sure he's uh, well maybe he's changed his mindset now now that he must know that Sam is, is pretty out of contention for a good points finish now uh wingfield and langen gonna try and go side by side in 130 and oh god again hatton is having to to slow up because of these cars racing each other very aggressively and it's a miracle he's still got no scratches on his car yes he's got to watch out for uh, sam watley behind him and also spanners just two cars behind so i think spanners is a fairly safe bet for a clean race but uh Hatton seems to be pulling to the inside down the start finish straight. He's not in the slipstream. That's a very odd uh, odd line for him to be taking. Ficacci um, has just made his move into second place on the inside of Conor Meyer down at turn one. So the MX-5 champion is into second place and is now setting his sights on uh, Gregory Leader and uh, could try and take his second victory of the season. So that, another one to keep an eye on. Gary Thomas and Alexander Dovisberg are still battling away over fifth place in the middle of the S's as well uh yellow ooms he's dropped back a, a little bit actually uh but uh power still making his way through cleanly there and uh hatton has still not found a way past john langham they're heading through uh degna's one and two now there'll be no way through for hatton here but be careful because he's got sam watley right behind him as well and uh, Spanners as well, although I don't think he'll be throwing his name. Oh, and Watley locking up and Hatton forced to take evasive action. And uh, Spanners is going to pounce on that one as well as he draws just alongside. No, nope, tucked back into the slipstream, but he'll definitely be having a run, as will Hatton on Langen and Wingfield on Shelley into Spoon Curve as well. It's all kicking off down there at the moment. Shelley is able to repel uh, Wingfield's advances but uh, Langen was not. And that's Garen Button going off the road there as well and losing a couple of spots there too. Hatton got a poor exit and that's actually let Langen back in front down there. So he's uh, he's tucked back into the slipstream. He's got wing for, uh, so oh. he's got uh, uh, Watley right in the slipstream coming to the inside of 130R now. There, there's going to be three coming into this. Where's it going to end goodness. up? My goodness, oh, they're so close and Shelley nearly drops it, but he hangs on and Wingfield uh, goes through or uh, maintains that position of course this is all going on over uh, some 12th and 13th place uh, at the moment and uh, Connor Meyer by the way has lost uh, another position this time to John Lang who's now made his way onto uh, the podium placings and uh, Dovitzberger has dispatched of Gary Thomas for fifth spot as well uh, but uh, we're still watching the championship battle unfold before our eyes and Hatton is forced to spend another lap looking at the back of John Langan's car Sam Harper by the way came across the line in 33rd place so he's still nursing that damaged car and uh with the way it's unfolding at the moment, I don't think Hatton's going to get it done on this uh, penultimate race. So uh, I expect this to go down to the finale because he's currently trying to find his way into 15th place and all over the curve on the way into the hairpin, trying to make his way around the outside of John Langan. And uh, that looks like it's done it for him this time. He's drawn alongside him. Of course, he'll have the tighter line through and he's cleared him. 
So yes. it's taken him a few laps. He's finally up into 15th place. It's actually 14th now because uh, you might have missed that Garen Batten uh, went wide and both of uh, John Langham and David Hatton got past him. So that's oh, yet one more place. Greenhow off the road down at Spoon as well. So that's another place again for a lot of these guys. That's a shame for because he was running in eighth place just then. That's a good result that he's just lost there. Come up to the field a bit to Carl Power. He's on the outside of Jelly Ooms in through 130R. They're going side oh. by side. They've touched. Oh, that was so close. Carl Power managed to just about keep it. I think he's uh, he's making the lunge. Not quite so close there. That's what we love get to a run see. on him down the start, finish straight though. Let's see uh, if he can put one up on the inside into the first corner because he's he's got a good toe here. It's all going on over eighth place between Ooms, Power, and then just behind them, John McClintock as well and power looking towards that outside at turn one in the uh, the bright green and red car can't find a way through on yellow ooms who were uh, going into this race had just moved himself up into third in the championship and he wants to keep it that way oh gary thomas in, just in front of them has gone off the road in the middle of the s's as well so that's uh, another place game for these guys He's retired. That looked that looked like a disconnect because he just went straight on and uh, and he's out of the race. So that's so that's a shame for Gary Thomas who's running very well there. Yeah, it doesn't say in the the chat that he's disconnected. So maybe he's uh, uh could be a hardware problem for him. We won't know, but uh, real shame for him nonetheless. And uh, oh, Dobertsberger into the hairpin is making his move on Conor Meyer as well. And uh, Steve Ficacci has not drawn in leader as I expected. And we've got two laps to go after this one. So uh, leader very much heading towards his second victory of the season at the moment. But uh, Power and Ooms still doing battle and Power's trying to find a way through on the inside. And Ooms a very aggressive defensive maneuver there, but Power has found his way through. And so that will put him up into uh, seventh place. Meanwhile, we have Harper back in 33rd, and he's crawling all over the back of our very own trumpets here in the uh, in the gold car. Uh, so let's see if he can uh, make a move into the hairpin. He dives down the inside, and that is a very clean move. And oh, I say that, he's just spun it on the exit. So Harper oh. is facing backwards uh, in a very dangerous spot here. He doesn't want to get more damage. Of course, with the rear wing damage, it's, it's so easy to lose the back end. I'm surprised he hasn't done it multiple times already this race. Uh, and so Harper, uh, right, Harper did pit to uh, change all that damage. That's why he's so far behind. Uh, so he's got a nice clean car now, but he, uh, I think the pressure of the situation trying to get past Trumpet has just uh, dropped it on the exit under power there. Right, as you were saying, he was uh, spinning around. Hatton was making a move on Edward Shelley into 130R, and he is now inside the top 10. So this could be this could be crucial here. So he'll be gaining, as it stands, 29 points, and Harper will only be getting six. And uh, with yeah, with 23 points over him, that could conclude things for the championship with a race to spare. So we'll have to keep an eye on uh, both of these guys' progress, but at the moment it's looking very handy for David Hatton. Just in front of him though, there's uh, another brilliant squabble, Ooms and Wingfield now going toe to toe over eighth place and Ooms having to go defensive into the hairpin. That's an open door for Hatton, but he decides not to walk through because he knows that Wingfield is gonna shut that door firmly in his face. Yeah, he's going to have to treat uh, the back of uh, Wingfield's car like a donkey, I think, because uh, you know, those two, we don't want them clashing in front and taking uh, Hatton out. So he, he does still have to be very careful. It looks like uh, he's in a very comfortable position, but it's never, never fully sorted until he crosses that checkered flag line. Absolutely not. We've seen anything can happen in the Formula Renault Challenge, and it usually does. So uh, we should be getting leader around. Oh, my God. Goodness me, Steve Focacci has taken the lead of the race. And I wonder where that happened because Leader had an eight tenth of a second advantage as they went over the finish line. But on the final lap that they're now starting, it's Steve Focacci who's now in contention to take his second victory. But Leader is going to have none of it at all. He's coming back at him down the front straight. And we can see an almighty scrap on this final lap for the lead, Chris. 
I think it must have uh, just been into that uh, that chicane because they were very close through it. So I think he must have made just a, a little lunge into the chicane. Uh, Leader must have made a mistake slightly earlier in the lap to have, to have dropped that time because he was 1.6 seconds the lap before. So um, you've got the Kachi Leader and then John Lang also just tucked up behind him. So we'll see if he can have a little sniff as well. Yeah, this could this, this could explode down the, in the second end of the uh, of the lap. Uh, Ficacci's had a very nice run through that S's section and put some distance between himself and Leader. So uh, we'll see uh, how it unfolds in the second half of the lap. But you don't have to be touched right up behind the car in front to get that slipstream down the back straight towards 130i. Seven tenths of a second. And uh, it very much looked like uh, he's holding that gap at the moment. So this could come down to the chicane. Coming around that right-hander for the final time this race, it's Ficacci in front for now. Because Ficacci, we saw having that amazing defensive drive at uh, the Silverstone Legacy uh, circuit, repelling the efforts of uh, Tim Ellis to, to take his first win in the Formula Renault Challenge. And uh, Leader doesn't look close enough, does he? This could be this could be the critical moment for him. Ficacci moves over to the left-hand side, trying to break that toe. But I don't think he needs to because lead is not close enough and he's got a nice margin towards the chicane and in fact it's John Lang actually challenging leader around the outside and he's going to try and take second place away and he can't make it work on the outside there it could come down to a drag to the finish line but leader has just got the momentum on him but here comes Steve Ficacci it's a second victory of the season for the NX5 champion and Gregory leader in second place ahead of John Lang that was uh, very close at the end there so Alexander Dobitsberger in uh, fourth place, Conor Meyer fifth, Alex Drillsma sixth, and then uh, Carl Power in seventh, James Wingfield in uh, eighth place, and then Yellow Ooze just beat David Hatton to the line. So that is tenth place, and we will see where uh, Sam Harper comes across the line. He's in the top 30 now, so this is critical. There is one point in it ah, and actually Sam just got 26th there so actually he's two points in contention still so we are going to go down to the finale but with 20 uh, sorry uh, 37 points advantage David Hatton is in a fantastic position 